So, what's anatomy all about? It's all about us. It's all about uh, our bodies. Uh, as you think about this topic, I hope that this verse from Psalm 139 and verse 14 comes to mind, and I hope it's something that we will write on our hearts. David says, depending on the translation you have, I will thank the Lord or I, or I praise Him. Why? Because I am fearfully and wonderfully evolved. I'm a big fat accident. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. As we've talked about all of these things concerning science this quarter, uh, this, is, uh, this is one of the, the topics and one of the, uh, the studies that I've been looking forward to getting to because we look out at the universe and there's evidence of design. We look at the stars and the planets and the solar systems and galaxies and we look at our, at our planet and we look at the things we've talked about this quarter and, and the ratio of water to land and the atmosphere and, and all of these things. All of these evidences of design, and yet we don't have to go all the way out in the universe to find that evidence. We can look at our hands, we can look at our bodies, and we, like David, can say, Marvelous are your works. My soul knows them very well. Our bodies are evidence of the existence of God. And even scientists have had to uh, demonstrate some kind of acknowledgement of that fact. That there is something unique, uh, something uh, characteristic of our bodies that it's hard to explain by means of evolution. Uh, and so even unbelievers look at our bodies with wonder and amazement. So this morning as we talk about anatomy and physiology... Bet those words weren't even in your thoughts when you got up this morning. Anatomy and physiology. Anatomy is just the stuff. It's just the bones. It's just the pieces uh, that make up our body. Physiology is how it all works together. Physiology is, is how the, 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 uh, the bones and the muscles and the nerves and all of that, how they act together in order that you can put one foot in front of another, uh, even if it's painful in order that you can have rational thoughts, even if it's painful, uh, in order that we might be able to function uh, as human beings, uh, it's, it's rather amazing. Our bodies uh, have incredible organization. There are some who have said that the body's like a, we look out at the, the universe at large, some have said our bodies are like a little mini universe. And even we, we've looked at quotations from George Simpson uh, in, this, in this study before, he, he's uh, called by many Mr. Evolution uh, because in his day he, he was one of the strong proponents of it. But even he has had to admit uh, that the body is the most highly endowed organization of matter that has yet appeared on earth. And yet he didn't believe in God. But yet he says, you, can't find, you cannot find anything else on earth that's anything like the body. Scientists have, uh, have been able to prove that things that are left to themselves, do they become more organized or less organized? Um, if you leave your house, uh, you go out on a date and you leave your children behind at the house by themselves, when you return, is the house more organized, if it's still standing, or less organized? Things left to themselves become disorganized. Scientists have been able to uh, prove that. If our bodies have been left to themselves, where does all this organization come from? Where does all of this design come from? And how is it that our bodies are so precisely put together? Not, not haphazardly. Our bodies are precise in their organization. There, there are these uh, various uh, organi organi organisms, but they've been divided into four parts. 
And we'll take this from the small to the large. We've talked about the human cell already this quarter. But our bodies are made up of cells. It's the smallest uh, portion of our bodies, the smallest uh, um, microscopic um, organization, unit of life within our bodies. And yet there are different cells. You have blood cells. You have skin cells. What kind of cells do you have? You have hair cells. You have brain cells. We've got, we'll see it in a little bit, we've got trillions of cells in our bodies. If you take all of those cells and just throw them into a, throw them into a vat, throw them into a container, where does the organization come from? How do these cells figure out how to work? How do these cells figure out what they are supposed to be? How does a blood cell know that it's not supposed to be a skin cell? How does a, how, how does a cell in the toe know it's not supposed to be a cell in the eye? How does it figure all that out? Well, these cells are brought together. And uh, groupings of cells uh, come together and they, are, they make up our tissue. So we have skin tissue and muscle tissue. And then those tissues, when they are together, they form organs. So we go from the smallest of our cells up to the tissues that we have. And these tissues, when they are combined and, and cooperate with each other, they form the organs, our liver, our heart, uh, our kidneys, the various parts that we have in our body. And then when you have all of these organs that are working together, functioning together, they make up a system. And we're going to talk about Mostly what we're going to talk about this morning are the, some of the systems in the Bible uh, because of the, the unique design that they offer. But here are some ten different systems in our bodies made up of different cells. There are nerve cells that are a part of our nervous system. There are blood cells that are a part of our circulatory system. There are... Ver but those cells, they, they, don't, they don't cross. They, they, don't, they don't change jobs. They, 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 don't, you know, they don't swap and say, you know, why don't you do my job for a day and I'll go do your job for a day. They know where they're supposed to be and what they're supposed to be doing. They come together, they make up the tissues, which make up our organs, which make up a whole little mini universe that just seems to function so well. Now, as you get older, does that function? Does it become better? Does it become, uh, does it increase in its, uh, in its abilities and in its power and in its strength? Oh, well I was going to give you an or, but uh, you don't like that one, so I guess you're going to go for the or. Why does that happen? Why, why do our bodies, why do our, why are our bodies not Increasing in strength and stamina. Because we're, we're deteriorating. What'd you say, Freddie? Father time. Fa yeah, Father Time. Uh, he's probably got something to do with it. Got a shelf life. Say again. Everything's got a shelf life. Got a shelf life. Um, <laughs> and and that's that's very true. So what are we? What are we doing with our bodies? If our bodies are so precisely put together, for what purpose have our bodies been so precisely put together? Have they been so precisely put together so that we can play sports until we can't play sports anymore? Say again? All of this points to a designer. Who has, on this, on this globe... Who has a body that points to a designer? Christians or non-Christians? Should someone who doesn't believe in God, doesn't even know that there is a God, should their body point them to something, to some higher being, to some intelligent creator at the very least? Or can someone who has never heard about God and who has never heard about evolution, could they come to the idea on their own that, wow, I must have come from that fish over there. 
Evolution is not something that you come up with on your own. Evolution is something that you must be taught. Why is it that uh, when, uh, when uh, civilized, if you want to call them that, why is it that when civilized men have gone in and, into remote locations on this earth, where there hasn't been the technology, where there hasn't been the mass communication, where there hasn't been all of the things that we enjoy, and they get there, they find that these folks who never heard about Jehovah God, they've never seen a Bible perhaps, but somehow, for some reason, they are worshiping, in their minds, a higher creature. Why are they doing that? Where did they learn to do that? You see, our bodies... They have all this precision. We have all of these cells and tissues and organs and, and systems and all of that within us, but yet God put something else in us. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. God placed that soul within us. Do dogs have an innate, inherent desire to worship, to seek out a higher uh, to, to seek out a higher creator. Do, do you ever see, does any of you have a pet dog? Any of them ever start bowing down to uh, things in the house besides you? They, dogs don't have a soul. Cows don't have a soul. They, they, they don't, they're not looking for something to worship, but God put something in us. God put an eternal spirit. And there's something, and we can't put our finger on it, but there's something about that eternal spirit that is seeking God. Now, is it possible to suppress that? Is it possible to force that back? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I, don't, I'm, I don't believe in God. Not going to believe in God. Not going to follow God. Not going to do it. Oh, yeah, we can suppress it. We can choose to do that. But a part of our unique makeup as human beings is that God has even placed that soul within us. So here's our cells. Estimated, and I don't know how you estimate this. I mean, do you start counting one day and just, you know, you, you get a calculator and that calculator is not big enough. So you, I, I don't know how you figure this, but it's been estimated that there's over 100 trillion cells in the human body. Well, if there's that many, they've got to be pretty small. And so each one is less than one one thousandth of an inch in, leak, uh, in length, and yet they are amazingly complex. And uh, do I have any of these blanks on your paper? Because I want to get beyond these cells. I want to get into the systems. But they've got a membrane that's a part of them that gives them substantial memory. Uh, and even this is a quote from a scientist down here, an evolutionist, by the way, who says that the man-made system uh, is no match. It, it cannot be matched. And I, and I want to get in and talk about these systems, so I'm going to skip over the cells. When you pick up an uh, encyclopedia... And here's the basic dictionary of science. And this was not written by uh, folks who believe in God. Uh, in fact, just the opposite. But they have defined a system to say any group of things or parts working together to give a united effect. All the different structures specifically designed to take part in one complex operation or having one purpose. They don't believe in God. And they're not trying to point the readers of the basic dictionary of science to God, but even when they try to give a definition for the system, nervous system, uh, the, uh, uh, the skeletal system, whatever the system might be, they, they are forced to admit that there is incredible design behind it. Let's talk about the uh, skin system. Skin is the, uh, uh, the largest organ of the human body, and it's a very busy place. I forgot to put in here. I think I, yep, it's not in here. I left one thing out of this little deal, and I'll add it in. A piece of skin about the size of a quarter contains one yard of blood vessels, four yards of nerves, 25 nerve ends, 100 sweat glands, and more than 3 million cells, and that's just in the size of a quarter. How many quarters would it take to cover your body? Go home and figure that out, all right? That's your take-home assignment. All right, but what does, our sin, what does our skin do? When we say it's a busy place, what is it doing? It's constantly doing things that we're not even, we don't even realize it. We don't recognize it, we don't think about it, but we count on it, don't we? 
When you go out in the rain and you forgot your umbrella, are you concerned about, about the rainwater seeping into your blood system? Why didn't you worry about that? The body takes care of it. The skin takes care of it. it it's interesting how the skin knows, not, knows what not to let in and it knows what to let. Why does the skin let sweat out but it doesn't let blood out? Unless you cut yourself. How does it know? Well, I'll let the sweat out, but I won't let the blood out. It knows, it knows how to control what's coming in or what's, or what's trying to come in and what's maybe not going out. And then when you cut yourself, does this get better or worse as you age? You don't even have to answer that, do you? When you cut yourself, it heals itself. Maybe not as quickly as it used to, right? Have you noticed that? You know, when you were younger... Uh, you know, if you cut yourself, oh, I don't need that Neosporin stuff, you know, it'll heal just by, fine by itself. Or if you put that Neosporin stuff on it, the next day you thought, oh, I thought I had cut myself. Then you get older, and, but it still heals itself, doesn't it? How does it do that? Has man been able to duplicate that? Well, not like, not like our human bodies. The skin system is highly complex and performs so many different functions, and yet there are those who say, well, it just happened. It just happened that way. What about our, what about, uh, come on, what about our skeleton system? How many bones do we have? That's already up there. Average of 206 bones. So when you're putting the quarters on to figure out how many quarters it takes to cover your body, you can count your bones. How many? 206 bones. I've also read that there's maybe 208. So I don't, I've seen two. I, when I went researching this, I thought it was 206, and then I was seeing 208. Uh, so I don't, I don't know if somebody grew a couple extra bones and, you know, threw it in their research somewhere. Um, you know, some people have extra hard heads, so maybe they've got an extra layer or two uh, up there, and, and, that, and that counters for, I, I don't know. 206 bones in the average person. Why do we have that? If you were going to make a foot, if you were going to make a hand, how many, how, many bones, how many bones would you put in there? I mean, here's a hand. I got five fingers, all right, five bones. You know, and, and if I want to be able to bend it, make it ten. You know, let's get generous. How many, how many bones are you going to put in your foot? How many? 48. 28. I don't know, Chuck. I'm, you, you could tell me 108. I don't know. I didn't, count, I didn't count those. Apparently, Chuck's done his research. 28 bones in the foot. Is that, is that true? Is that, is that in each foot? Or both feet? What? It's just his favorite number. I'll buy that. Is there any evidence of design, anything special about our bones? Anything unique about bones? Of course, they, they form our framework within our body. Uh, and uh, our bones are there to uh, provide some kind of protective covering. Imagine if you didn't have a skull, where you would be. Imagine if, uh, uh, here, here's, here's Marsha Kelly dealing with the troubles that she's having with her bones. What, is, what does it do when you have trouble with your bones? Does it affect your life? Yeah. Why is that? Because we are so used to these 206 bones working precisely as they were made to work. And so when they begin to work in ways that well, it's not supposed to do that. The, 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 these feet are not supposed to hurt. This knee is not supposed... When they start behaving in ways that we're not used to, all of a sudden, you know, some people start blaming God. Well, God, why are you letting this happen to me? Do our bones, do they show that there is something unique about creation? Something unique about how we are put together. Why is it, 
Why is it that we have two bones in our lower leg, but only one bone in, in our, I'll just call it the upper leg? Why is that? How difficult, here's a tricky question, how difficult is it to break your femur, Rose? How difficult is it to break a femur? It's supposed to be pretty difficult unless your name is Tom Martins. Why is it so difficult to break that bone? Do our bones do anything for us? I think I have up here that they even provide some of these, uh, so when we talk about bone marrow transplants, when we talk about extracting certain things from the bone marrow in order to treat other ailments. How did we ever figure that out, by the way? How did we ever figure out that there might be something in the middle of my bone that might be good for something else? Why would we ever come up with that idea? We've talked about skin. We've talked about the skeleton. What about the, the muscles? There are more than 600 muscles. And you believe over 600 muscles in our bodies. Now, do those start working better or start working worse over time? Those get stronger or we six if you were going to make a body and let's let 206 but 600 muscles. Do you know you had that many muscles? Have you ever uh, have you ever worked outside or uh, helped somebody move or done something and then the next the next morning you get up and what do you say? I'm hurting uh, muscles I didn't know I had. Why? Well, because our bodies are full of muscle. Why do we need so many muscles? How many different ways can you move your arm? Now, some of you have limited motion, right? Because of shoulder surgeries. Or, but how, how many different directions, just a simple arm movement? How many muscles does it take to be able to bend down and pick something up? How many muscles does it take to pick up an apple and to eat it? What, why, did God, why did God make it that way? You see, what, they, what evolutionists want us to believe is that, you know, in primitive man, he couldn't get the apple to his mouth. And so those muscles had to develop and they had to evolve. So eventually, and this is hyperbole, obviously, but eventually he was able to evolve that muscle to be able to reach his mouth. Well, that'd be difficult to believe because how did he ever survive if he couldn't eat it? Again, that's hyperbole. But that's what they want us to believe, is that man has come to this perfected state because he has evolved and improved over time. What about, uh, uh, oh, I forgot to put up these uh, nice functions that our bodies have. Some, did you notice that some of our muscles work automatically and some uh, don't work automatically? Uh, sometimes our mouth works automatically. Have you ever noticed that? You, you, you ever, you ever, uh, has your mouth ever gotten in front of your, your brain, you know, and, it, and it, it starts working when you don't want it to work? It's kind of like the heart, kind of like the lungs. You know, they work even though you don't know they're working, and sometimes the mouth, you know, runs away with itself for some reason. But there are other muscles, usually like our tongue and our mouth, that require our human will. How did God decide which muscles to give voluntary abilities to and which ones to give automatic abilities to. Aren't you glad he didn't give automatic abilities to your biceps, to your arms? I mean, would you like to go around all day, you know, waving at people? How, how, how did God determine which muscles to make uh, in those forms? What about the digestive system? Can you believe the average person will consume 40 tons of food in a lifetime? Makes you want to go out and get lunch, right? That average? That's an average. Yeah, that's average. Some, some of us are above average, right? 40, I, I had to double check this because this, this blew me away. If you eat 40 tons of food, how big would you be without a digestive system? If your body could not process, <laughs> and digest and dispose of that food. 
Now, how did that happen? I mean, were, were the early bodies of human beings, before we evolved, were the early bodies of humans just big old blobs? You know, that, that, that couldn't, couldn't function? And they figured out, hey, we need to be able to digest this stuff. 40 tons of food. And yet our digestive system is able to start working that out even from the moment it enters our mouth, it starts to be digested. You know that there are chemicals even within our saliva that begins to, to, work, to, to work, that, uh, work that process, and yet all of this transpires. When you eat a steak, thinking about lunch, when you eat a steak, I don't know how much I want to get into where steaks came from. Uh, I don't really want to get into that. When you eat meat, how does your stomach know to digest the meat that you ate and not the meat of your stomach? How does it figure that out? How does it figure out, get rid of the cow but not the human? Why doesn't the stomach somehow digest itself in the process? Oops, <laughs> didn't, re did didn't realize that was the human there. How does it know to do that? Seriously. You know, it, it, is, it is astounding that when you look at the design, and, and you pick any one, not, we're looking at a lot of the systems, you pick any one of these systems out and you place it on the laboratory table and you say, please explain how this happened by accident. How is it that the stomach figured out to rebuild its lining every three days? How, how did it figure that out? And you see this quote from, uh, from even these evolutionists that say, if we wanted to duplicate that, we would have to boil our food in strong acids at 212 degrees to accomplish what the body's doing at 98.6. How is our body doing that? How are we able to function? How would we be able to function without a digestive system? What about the circulatory system that's uh, composed of all of the... Uh, of our heart, our veins, our, uh, what are those other things, the arteries, uh, the capillaries, and all the blood that's flowing through it? Would we be able to survive without our heart that is pumping 100,000 times per day, pumping 1,800 gallons of fluid of blood through it every day? And how long does it do that? You look at our lifespan. How was a human heart able to do that for 930 years with Adam? I mean, we think about our hearts given out today and we say, yeah, you know, if it's got to pump that much. Where, where's Don? Don's not in here. I was going to pick on Don. Don. He's fun to pick on. But Don works with pumps, water pumps. Uh, you, you all have a water pump at home? Do you have a water pump on your car? Um, do those ever break down? you ever have a problem with any one of those things? you ever need to get that serviced? What do you get serviced more? Your heart pump or some other pump that you bought um, on some piece of something that you own? How does our heart, and I realize that some of us have heart problems, but how does it do this day in and day out? And how much thought do you give to it? How much thought do we give to the fact that today our heart will beat 100,000 times? How did man figure out? It astounds me that, uh, and I know some of you have pacemakers. It astounds me that uh, that little six-month-old or six -month -old, uh, baby on Monday when they did the operation to repair the, the holes in her heart that they put a pacemaker in a six-month-old baby. How do you figure out how to put a pacemaker into a six-month-old baby to make that heart beat? Because here's another six-month-old baby and that heart is beating just fine. Who taught that heart what to do? When did that heart stop, start beating? What day is it? And I can't recall right off the top of my head. What day is it in the womb? Twelfth week? 
when the heart starts beating. Who taught it to do that? <laughs> Scott, I'm not relying on you for, for that kind of information anymore. Eight weeks going once. Going twice. All right, you can have it. Okay, so who taught it to do that? How did it know to start doing that at the eighth week, Scott? How did it know to not wait until the twelfth week? You know, it, yeah. You know, if they were waiting for Scott to tell the heart when to start beating, the baby would die. You know? How does it know when to start beating? How does it know how to beat? How does it know that it needs to beat this many times in order to get the blood to flow? What if your how does blood get to your feet? What if, what if blood is not getting to your feet? Is there a problem? You got an issue there? How does this little muscle in your center mass, how does it do that? How does it, how does it when, some, when sometimes your arteries are clogged, what does, what, what does the heart sometimes start doing when an artery is clogged? It starts itself growing some other way to get that blood around. Now, it doesn't mean we don't need our arteries cleaned out. It doesn't mean we need to cl not clean out that blockage. But have you heard of and seen reports of hearts that start growing even other ways to, why? How, why doesn't it just say, ah, I give up, you know? You know, if they want to keep eating fried chicken and, and french fries and block it up, fine with me, just let them do it. How does it know to, to say, I need to keep getting blood? Don? Glenn, Glenn Dawson is part of doing that right now. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's uh, you know, it, it's, it's an amazing process that... The world that evolutionists would have us to believe and to say, you know, well, th this is just something that's a, it's a modern marvel, but it's not any sort of evidence for design. The blood is pumped through a streamline of pipes, these arteries, veins, and capillaries. If you stretched them out, you'd get 100,000 miles. Uh, I don't know who figured that out either. I mean, how do you figure out you know, you start measuring, you know, and start adding it up. That's a, that's a lot of yardage. Go back, to how, go back to that quarter of a skin cell, or a quarter of a skin, and how much is in that. And then how many yards, how many miles uh, of tubes. You've got tubes, pipes, running through you. And all of that is, is wrapped around these bones, and it's running through these muscles. And is it the nervous system yet? Good. I was nervous that it wasn't the nervous system. And all of that has nerves built within it. Aren't you glad you have nerves? Maybe not, right? Not when uh, Norm's not here. Not when you have to go get those nerves fried so they'll stop hurting. But if you didn't have nerves, what would happen to your hand if you placed it on a hot stove? Well done, right? Uh, You've got, ner why do we have nerves? Why did God give us nerves? So that we could have feeling, sensitivity. You know, nerves are not just to sense pain. Those of you who have difficulty with nerves, and, and, and if, if, if you don't have any, if you have, I'm trying to word this in a way that it makes sense to me. Uh, if you have nerves that are not functioning, you may have problems with pain. What kind of sensitivity do you have? What can you feel when you touch? It's not there. God has designed a body that has a communication center system within it that is unmatched in all of the world. Between our brain and, and even, uh, you know, we, we pick on people in the size of their brain and the capacity of their brain, but, you know... Even, even us with our little brains, do you know that traveling between our brain and all of our nerves are messages that are going 250 feet per, 450 feet per second? When, when you stub your toe, 
There's a message that goes from your toe to your brain at over 300 miles per hour that says, ouch. How did your, your brain, your brain knew it before your mouth said it. And it's almost like the brain knew it before the, it even happened. How, how, did, how did that happen? What, what, what if it went slower? What if those messages were a little bit slower? You put your hand on a hot stove and, and maybe, you're, maybe your system's only traveling like, you know, 20 miles per hour. But I mean, it's not that far, hand to the brain. I mean, 20 miles an hour would be fast enough, right? How long is the hand going to stay? A little bit too long before that message gets to the brain and says, ouch. And you move, and of course, then a message has to get back from your brain to your hand that says, get off, dummy. You know, and that, and that takes a while too. It's instantaneous. This, this communication system. Um, but sometimes our bodies have communication problems, right? You ever have communication problems in your marriage? Sometimes our bodies have communication problems. As they get older, sometimes our body is not communicating at the rate that we used to be able to communicate at. But even at that point, the design that is evidenced in our body is tremendous. It's been estimated, even by Carl Sagan, one of the most renowned atheists. He looked at our brain and he said to, the, to, to uh, give us an equivalent of what a, an average brain would be, you would need 20 million volumes to be able to fill what's in the average person's brain. You didn't know you had that much, did you? I mean, give you, you know, give you credit, you know, you might, you might take a million You'd have to have a bookshelf 600 miles long to be able to fit all that's in your brain. We've got to give ourselves more credit, right? I mean, some people, they might not make it all the way to Atlanta, but if they get to Gainesville, that's doing pretty good, right? And is number of volumes. But how does our brain know how to process all of that? How does our brain know the difference between the ouch from a stubbing of a toe and the ouch from the... I'm hungry, give me something to eat. How does it know the difference? How does it know that when the toe gets hurt that it's not wanting a cheeseburger, but when the stomach is hurting that it wants a cheeseburger? How does the brain, how does it differentiate? It's got all of these messages coming to it. And guess what? We pick on, we pick on the guy's brains, but even a guy's brain is understanding the difference in these messages. Sometimes we can't understand the messages that our wives are sending to us, okay? But our brains are able to figure out that's an ouch hurt and that's a give me a cheeseburger hurt or, or whatever. Think about how many messages your brain is receiving and sending at the same time. Your brain right now, uh, we don't have... To, your brain right now is receiving messages from what you're hearing, from what you're seeing, from where you're sitting, what you're touching, from what you'd like to be tasting. Your brain processes all of this, and yet it's able to keep you functioning in such a way that most of us can chew gum and walk at the same time. The body gives amazing evidence for God. And uh, I'm going to skip all this. It, the hand, you'll have to get on the website to get the rest of this because the only thing left on here is to talk about the reproductive system. But I'll leave that to you to figure out how, uh, how intricate uh, that design is. But the bottom line is, you don't have to go out into the universe to find design. We've got incredible design right here, which shows that there is a God.